Okay, so welcome to this video. Let us talk about how one can measure the pK for any given compound. Because pK, that is acid dissociation constant, plays a very vital role in controlling the retention time in case of ionizing compound. In case if your compound undergoes ionization, the pH of the mobile phase plays a very impact the very high impact onto the retention of the compound as far as reverse phase chromatography is concerned. So in this video, we are going to talk about how one can measure the pKa value of the given compound. And I am going to explain you measurement of the pKa with the help of a very simple technique called as the potentiometry. So let us begin with the presentation now. So how to measure the pK of the given compound and if you look at the various research articles published you will find that there are more than 13 different techniques by which you can measure the pKa. But in this video let us understand how potentiometry will help us in measuring the pKa. So the measurement of the pKa with the help of potentiometry. So what is meant by Ka? The Ka stands for the acid dissociation constant means how far your acid can undergo a dissociation. For example, if it is HCl, hydrochloric acid, it will dissociate into H plus and Cl minus ions. So the degree of dissociation is called as the acid dissociation constant. And the minus logarithm to the base 10 of the acid dissociation constant is called as the pKa, as like the pH, okay? So the Henderson and Hessel belts has established a very important equation and by which equation we are going to understand how to measure the pKa. So the pH equal to pKa plus log of A minus concentration to the HA concentration. Now what is this A minus and HA? So in this case the HA stands for the acid or the weak acid. So the acid undergoes a dissociation of let us say H plus A minus right so it will donate the proton and it will form a conjugated base that is a minus for example in the case of hcl you will form h plus and cl minus ion so let us understand you know what will happen if the a minus and ha are exactly the same and if you put this same value in the above equation right you will find that the ph equal to now pka plus log of let us say a minus equal to 1 and ha is also equal to 1 and then it will further get simplified as ph equal to pka plus log 1. I hope you must be able to easily understand it. Now here is the important uh, term that log 1 is equal to 0 right the, the value of log 1 is equal to 0 and hence if you substitute the value of log 1 in this equation you will end up getting ph equal to pka. So what this equation talks about, this says that in case if the concentration of your conjugated base that is A minus is equal to the conjugated of as the, uh, the concentration of HA, right, then you will end up with the pH, whatever it may be, but that will be nothing but your pKa value. Right. So, in a sense, we need to understand what is that concentration, what is that pH, what is that pH value, whether 3 or 4 or 1, at which your conjugated concentration, the, the concentration of conjugated base will be exactly equal to the concentration of an acid. The 50 percentage of the conjugated base and 50 percentage of the acid that concentration you need to determine first and measure the pH at that particular concentration and you will end up with the pKa value. So please allow me to explain you how you can easily do that. Okay, so how one can identify now the situation where the A minus equal to HA. If you are able to identify this one, you have got the pKa value. So let us understand, you know, this is simply a acid base titration we are going to conduct a simple acid based titration and how you determine the end point our end point is when the entire ha right when entire a minus get consumed by the base so at the equivalence point or the end point all a minus would have consumed by the base this is the 
the fair importance of conducting the uh, acid based titration so let us assume that the end point for weak acid is 24 ml of point over normal sodium hydroxide solution sodium hydroxide is a base over here and we are titrating our sample the weak acid against the 0.01 normal sodium hydroxide solution and let us assume that the 24 ml is our end point that is equivalence point meaning the 100 percentage of a minus will get consumed by 24 ml of 0.01 normal sodium hydroxide why you are needing 24 ml of 0.01 normal NaOH to consume the entire that is 100 percentage of the a minus ions present into a solution now the next equation is very important this means <clears throat> when you have a 24 ml during a titration when you have a 24 ml of the 0.01 normal sodium hydroxide solution into a solution then you will left with 0 percentage of the a minus and 0 percentage of the ha because all your A minus would have already consumed by 24 ml of point over normal NMH. If there is no A minus, there will be no HA also. Now the second equation is very important. So let us understand at 12 ml, exactly 50 percentage of the entire titrant consumed, that is in this case 12 ml of point over normal NMH, what will be the situation? Or what would have been the situation so you will have the 50 percentage of the a minus and 50 percentage of the ha now this statement is very important and once you understand that then what is the situation when a minus is equal to ha now can you understand over here just go one step back in this state of the, when you have added 12 ml of the point over normal NaOH to the solution during titration you will left with equal amount of a minus and ha and this is for the situation we are we were talking about the pka is equal to ph when when you will have the equal amount of your a minus and ha so you need to now you need to now just understand what is the ph what is the pH at the 12 ml of the 0.01 normal sodium hydroxide solution? So, what is the situation when A minus is equal to HA? It is actually the, the pH, whatever it may be, that will be equal to a pKa. And this is called as this 12 ml of the 0.01 normal NaOH addition. As the 24 ml is what? Our equivalence point. The 24 ml is our end point. So this 12 ml, which is 50% of the equivalence point, is called as the half equivalence point. So in case of the pKa measurement, you need to understand. You need to understand what is the pH at the half equivalence point. Because at the half equivalence point, your A minus will be equal to HA. Right? So let us understand. So the value of pH at the half equivalence point will be your pKa value. So once you understand what is the half equivalence point during the titration, then measure the pH at the half equivalence point. So you need to have the, the pH measurement system, right? pH measurement system during the potentiometric titration. Because your interest in acid bed titration is what to understand let us say the potential difference right when you add the sodium hydroxide solution into the weak acidic solution but along with measuring the potential you need to also understand what is the ph across all the time points that you have consumed your NaOH during the titration probably at the beginning of acid base titration your ph of the solution will be highly acidic because your sample is what highly acidic or the acid source substance the moment you start adding the NaOH the, uh, the, uh, the alkali solutions you will have a now the change into the potential and then you measure the potential that is required for understanding the uh, acid the strength of the acid but in this case you need to also keep on measuring the pH as well across all the time points because Unless and until you understand the pH, you will not be able to measure the pKa. 
so at the half equivalence point right at the 12 you may have the potential measured but also measure the pH with the suitable glass electrode when you have added exactly 12 ml of the point over normal NaOH in this particular case and your crop could be looking this way so this is your equivalence point almost 24 ml this is your end point but you are not interested in understanding the end point as far as the pK measurement is concerned you are looking for the half equivalence point you are looking for the half equivalence point so what is the half equivalence point if this is let us say 24 ml this becomes 12 ml and then understand what is the pH if you look at the y axis I have measured the pH of the solution over here right and then I will realize that the pK of the uh, as the pH is around let us say 4.5 or around close to 5 my pK will be again the 4.5 so just by measuring the pH at a time point when my A minus is equal to HA, I will have actually got the pKa of the compound. Okay, I hope you must have now understand how to measure the pKa value just by simply conducting the potentiometric titration. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will meet you soon in another such kind of informative and useful video. Till then, take care and bye-bye. See you soon.